Just imagine that this is how you would see the world, out of focus and blurred, with no chance of putting on glasses or getting things into focus some other way. And more light didn't help either. On the contrary, the bright parts dazzle you and make it harder to see the things nearby. Precisely that was the frustrating situation for scientists who wanted to observe molecules in living cells under an optical microscope. They saw anything smaller than 200 nanometers as a blur of light. We're talking about things that are 5,000 times smaller than the tip of this pencil. That's about a two hundredth of the width of a single hair. At this level, anyone wanting to observe processes in living objects comes up against the limits of resolution. By comparison, if you enlarge a pencil tip, which is about two millimeters wide 5,000 times, that is about the size of a cell. Here we are at the gates of the nano world. From here, it's impossible to make out any details. That is what the law formulated by the physicist Ernst Abbe in 1873 tells us. Because light comes in waves, very fine structures can no longer be distinguished under an optical microscope. At 200 nanometers, about half the wavelength of light, you reach the limits of resolution. There are lots of molecules like these figures, but if you try to view them under an optical microscope, they become blurred like all objects which are closer to each other than 200 nanometers. Professor Stefan Hell and his team wanted to produce optical microscope images of individual molecules in living cells. Several people said that they could make the optical microscope more accurate, but it wasn't as easy as that. They thought the same thing would probably happen to me, but this time it was different. Stefan Hell actually managed it. With the STED microscope, which stands for Stimulated Emission Depletion. With it, they were able to get 10 times closer to living objects than anyone had managed before. But it was a long process. The starting point was classic fluorescence microscopy. Here, a dye which fluoresces under light is introduced into the cell as a marker. The molecules in the cell have a fluorescent nanolamp attached to their heads, so to speak. Now, when they encounter light of a specific wavelength, these nanolamps are stimulated and the molecules light up. But we haven't managed it yet. Everything is still far too bright. The problem is, when structures or details are closer together than 200 nanometers, they light up at the same time. And that's why the sample will ultimately appear as a wishy-washy blur. You can compare the scientist's problem with a room in which lots of torches are all shining at the same time very close together. If too much is lit up, all the other pictorial information is outshone. And so, under the microscope, the scientists see molecules drifting in a soup of light. They need to find a trick. It's the same with gravity. This thing cannot fly on its own. But if you find the trick of making the rotors turn fast enough, then you know that the helicopter will stay up in the air. You just need to find the trick. The first trick for a sharp nanometer image, switch off some of the fluorescent molecule. It is actually possible not only to make the fluorescent molecules glow, but also to stop them doing so, but unfortunately not one at a time. Then Professor Hell had a brainwave. What if you could use a second beam of light to switch off just the fluorescent glow of the neighboring molecules? It was theoretically possible, but no one had ever tried it before. They needed prototypes of the microscopes. Professor Hell's team experimented with optical components, mirrors and filters. Here you can see them being carefully adjusted. Professor Hell's main focus now lies in switching off the fluorescent molecules in the outer ring of the spot. That is the trick that the scientists have been looking for. Now the scientists are working with two beams of light, a green one to switch them on, and a red ring-shaped beam to switch them off. Is this the breakthrough? You take a beam that switches on the molecules and makes them glow, but it cannot be focused any more precisely than what I'm showing you here, 200 nanometers. In order to see only the molecules in the middle, you take another beam. It's bagel-shaped, ring-shaped. 
Now we put them on top of each other, and as you can see, what we have left is just what's in the middle. It's only in the middle, in the hole, that the molecules can light up. Outside, where the bagel is, they've been switched off. And again, the first light beam makes all the molecules in the 200 nanometer spot start fluorescing. And now we see the trick with the bagel. The ring-shaped light beam switches them off. Only in a tiny dot in the middle, the bagel hole, can the fluorescent molecules carry on glowing. And they are pin-shaped. This hole in the middle is no longer subject to the 200 nanometer limit. Professor Hell has succeeded in extending the ABBA formula relating to the resolution limit of light refraction. Using STED technology, Professor Hell's group was able to get five to ten times closer. It supplies fascinating sharp images of molecular movements. Using the trick with the two overlapping light beams, it is even possible to make 3D films of objects measuring 20 to 50 nanometers, like these protein tubes in a cell wall. Today, STED microscopes are used all over the world. Now it's being used here, for example, to decode the chromosome distribution in a bacterium, or to help us understand how a nerve cell is constructed. Can it move, so to speak, in our brain when we learn something? Does something happen? Does something get switched on or off? And this field of ultra-high resolution light microscopy, or nanoscopy as we call it, is a rapidly expanding field. And I'm delighted to see that these techniques are being introduced into many, many branches of science. Professor Hell's STED microscope makes ultra-high resolution images for optical microscopes possible. So blurred pictures from the nano world are a thing of the past. Thank you.